First and foremost, I like starting out my video saying welcome back. And if you're a first time viewer here of my channel, uh, welcome. My name is Matt. The channel is Secondhand Home Theater. And my channel is just that. I talk about various home theater topics that talk about equipment, media, and just different things. But I do it through the lens of buying used items and finding deals on used equipment. Uh, so that is exactly what we're doing here today. This is a follow-up video about a video I posted about a month or two ago. It'll be linked up in the corner where I'm going to talk about my Marantz VP11 projector in a little more detail now that it's been my reference projector that I've basically used for all my content over the last couple months that I've had it here in my home theater. Let me begin with a little journey. I'm going to take you down memory lane here and talk about my projector path uh, over the course of like the last 12 months and my opinions on projectors and stuff uh, over that time span. Now, if you want more detail than what I'm gonna talk about here today, I'm gonna try and keep it brief. You can go and click on the video that will be linked up in the corner. I talked about all my home theater projectors up until the point that I got my null LED uh, at the end of last year, the end of 2023. So if you want more detail and me kind of in more of a long form video, go ahead and click up there and, and watch that if you're interested. So at the time of recording, this is August 2024. If you would have asked me one year ago, so August of 2023, my opinions on my home theater projector that I had at the time and my just general thoughts on the projectors uh, in general, I can almost guarantee I would have told you JVC was the way to go. I was happy with my RS-46 that I had at the time, and that if I somehow had unlimited funds to go and buy whatever I wanted in my home theater, I would have just picked the highest quality JVC I could have gotten at the time. Well, that was a year ago. So if you then would have jumped ahead to about, oh, eight months ago, so right around December, January, oh of 2024, the end of 2023, I would have told you that the JVCs had their positives, but my opinion had completely changed. And I was all in on the old school high-end DLP projectors. And I would have been right in the honeymoon phase, if you will, right in the throes of first purchasing my null LED projector. And I would have told you LED projector, that's the way to go. This DLP, all that stuff. I would have been completely just caught up in that. And I would have told you that yes, there are some positives to the JVC projectors, even older models. But for me, I was all in on like that LED uh, null projector that you couldn't change my mind. That that was my projector, nothing was gonna beat that out to me. So now we fast forward to today, which like I said, this is August of 2024. And here today, my opinions have changed yet again from where it was even at the beginning of this year. I've been able to start this channel and not only produce content and interact with a lot of you viewers out there, but I've also been able to bring in a few more projectors to test out here in my home theater. Some with my wife's approval, some maybe not, that I kind of snuck in here and then just asked for forgiveness afterwards. And thankfully she was understanding of that. But I have brought in a handful of projectors to kind of review and use, and then a few of them I've sold off, and then a couple of them I've decided to keep. And one of those big projectors, and I don't mean big physically, but I mean like big idea projectors that's kind of reframed my opinion on the home theater projector situation has been the Marantz VP11. And same as me talking about my history of projectors in more detail, I also have another video on that Marantz VP11 that'll be linked up in the corner that I put out about a month, month and a half ago, uh, depending when this video posts, somewhere in that time frame, where I talked a little more about how I purchased that and the issue I had with the original one and whatever. So if you want more details on that, go ahead and, and click up on that video up there in the corner. But more to the point for today, I got that Marantz VP11 in here, like I said, a couple months ago. I posted that video that was linked up in the corner about a month, month and a half ago. In that time frame, I've basically used that Marantz VP11 as my primary viewing source projector here in my home theater. And initially that only started to be fuel for content for this channel. But a funny thing happened with that. And that funny thing is that over the course of the months doing this, 
that projector has really grown on me and has really become my primary projector now that I'm keeping here is like my reference level projector here in my home theater. Even though it is relatively old. I mean, it's going on 20 years old. It was produced in 2006. So, you know, we're on like 18 years old now for this projector. It's probably up until maybe the most recent projector I just recently purchased, the best image quality I've seen on any projector I've owned here in my home theater. Now, up until I bought the Marantz, I really thought my null LED was the best. And I knew it had some deficiencies. The black level couldn't get as, as deep as like the JVCs or even some other high-end LED DLPs that have an actual dimming function that's functional where the null LEDs isn't. I can safely say that the Marantz is the best image quality I've experienced. And that's because not only does it replicate colors and chroma and everything really well. Granted, the colors are not as vibrant as say my null LED projector, but the black level is so much better and just digs so much deeper on this projector unit. But it was lacking in one key area and that was the overall brightness because the max lumen output of this projector, even with a brand new genuine Marantz lamp in it, is gonna top out at like 700 lumens, six, 700 lumens. And that's if you have the iris fully wide open, you know, and max brightness set in, brand new lamp that hasn't aged uh, considerably. So the max lumen output really just pales in comparison to most modern projectors and even other projectors of the time period. But the lamp that was on this unit when I bought it was already aged about six, 700 hours or somewhere in that range. So it had already lived through a good portion of its life. So I did something that I haven't done in quite a while. And that was I sought out a lamp replacement on eBay for this projector. And I actually went about it kind of a weird way. So all these Marantz projectors share the same internal components, more or less. And one of those components that crosses over between all of them is the lamp. And while the lamps are slightly different over the different generations, the main basic component and the connectors and everything is the same. So I bought a genuine Marantz lamp for this projector, but it was actually made and originally marketed for one of the older 720 models. I think it was for like a VP 12 or 13, uh, somewhere in that range. So I was able to buy that on eBay and I only paid $70, I think it was, plus shipping. Very, very, very rarely are you gonna find a genuine lamp being sold from a reputable retailer for these projectors. And if you do, it's gonna be usually pretty expensive you know, like three, four, five, six hundred dollars because they're so like scarce and hard to find. And since doing that, that helped alleviate the biggest issue that this had, as I said a little bit ago, which is the overall brightness. Even with a brand new lamp in there and I've put, I don't know, 20 hours, 30 hours or something on it since I've had it, it's still not gonna be as bright as some of these other projectors that are out there. Because again, even with as bright as it can get, you're not even getting a thousand lumens. You're getting six, 700. So even with that, it's not gonna be as bright. But having that in there, it is a noticeable uptick in brightness. And while it does elevate the black level slightly, it's not enough to where it's noticeable and where you're sacrificing the black levels in lieu of, you know, these bright scenes. You're really getting more contrast between a peak white or a peak color luminance and the black floor. So it's raised, elevated slightly, but it's still not that bad. It's still really good. And so making that purchase of buying the lamp to replace in this projector really was a good idea in my mind and I think really benefits the overall performance and picture quality that you get. But one other major positive and something that this Marantz projector has done that has even bested my null LED projector, and that is in regards to the rainbow effect on the image. Now, before I had this Marantz, I talked about my null LED had virtually no rainbow effect. And you could see it in very like rainbow effect heavy content 
and stuff that was really going to produce that effect regardless of the type of DLP projector that you use. It's just, you know, the way the patterns on the screen or the motion or something is just really indicative. It's going to in, in, introduce that into the image. So I would see it occasionally, but really in most content, I never saw it. Even on some of that content that was showing rainbows on my null LED does not show it on this Marantz. It's actually quite crazy to me that it is able to produce so few rainbows, given the fact that it is a color wheel with a lamp versus the LED projection of my other projector. So much so that when I was doing some AB comparisons and going back to my null LED to watch a few scenes, I don't know if it's just my eyes have changed or just that they've adapted to watch the Marantz more, but I can see rainbows now in scenes that I never saw them before on my null LED. It's almost as if the Marantz is so finely tuned that I'm picking up on stuff on my null LED that I wasn't seeing before in terms of rainbows. It's really kind of weird. I don't know how that happened, but I can safely say that the least amount of rainbows I've ever seen on one of these high-end DLPs is now my Marantz. It's even better than my null LED projector. And I thought that couldn't be done unless you got to like the highest level LED DLP projector. So and that's a huge win again for this Marantz projector. It's actually quite crazy to me how it's able to keep those rainbows out of the image. So, but that's another huge positive. And so as a little bit of a side note, this Marantz projector, while it is so good and so high quality, it also put that itch in me to try and explore my options again for more content here on this channel and to maybe find another projector here to have in my home theater. And so I recently purchased another projector. I actually made a community post not that long ago at the time of recording about it that you've probably seen on my page. This is a mouthful to spit out, but I bought a D-Vision 30 XL VIDI projector by Digital Projection. And this projector is actually a large venue, large screen projector. Uh, it's like 7,500 lumens and it's brightest setting. It has a giant, massive lens on it that's even bigger than the Marantz projector I have. Um, so I've got that in here to kind of like test going forward. So I'm definitely going to have some content on that in the future. But this Marantz projector opened up a lot of those doors again to me that I thought were going to be closed after I got my null LED. And so ultimately to wrap this video up, as I said in my other videos, if you have the proper viewing conditions where you can get by with five, six, seven hundred lumens out of the projector that you don't need a thousand, two thousand or more lumens. A projector like the Marantz is a huge budget friendly projector to get. If you can get one of these for a hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars, and you can put it in the proper environment it needs to be in, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with how good the quality is of this type of unit. You can definitely get a much better value and a much better experience than even buying some other newer projectors that are used, you know, that you could really save in the long run by buying one of these and get a good amount of life out of it before you have to buy a lamp or before you have to decide to upgrade because there's no lamps at a reasonable price available or whatever the situation is. But, you know, really these projectors are a really good value and something that can really stretch your budget if you're wanting to get kind of in the door or just want something different in your home theater. So with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I'm sure this video has followed the trend of my last couple videos where I'm just in here rambling and just like spitting out, you know, all these words about stuff. So I'm gonna wrap up the video. Uh, leave a comment down below if you like this kind of content, uh, you know, if you want to see more projector related stuff, because uh, I do have some more in the works. I'm also going to get to my calibration videos, hopefully, and do some like audio based video content about speakers and a few other things here in my home theater. And with that, I will see you in the next video on secondhand home theater. Thank you.